I went and sat in the living room with a big old butcher knife and said, I dare you leave. Morgan Davis had grown accustomed to her husband Chris's threats, even when he held a knife. And I said, oh, OK, so are you going to kill me now? Like, that, that is an example of how numb I became to his threats. Chris and Morgan met in the Marine Corps, where they became fast friends. Then the relationship turned physical, and Morgan got pregnant. They figured the right thing to do was to marry. I did not love her. I, I don't think if you'd asked me then what love was, I'd have been able to tell you. Then Morgan miscarried. Still, the couple decided to stick it out. There were good times, but they often argued. Neither were willing to give ground. There was this psychological power trip between us both. Chris, however, had to have the last word. To get his way, he would go into fits of rage and make threats. I never physically hit her. I used psychological, emotional, and verbal abuse. Even then, Morgan was determined to stay. I came into this marriage not with just the Marine Corps, but with the street mentality of I'm built for this. One night, Chris threatened her with a knife. This time, she ran out of the house and called the police. Chris was arrested and committed to a psychiatric hospital. There, it was discovered that he had intermediate explosive disorder. I was considered a rageaholic, so the one wrong thing, I would blow up and literally black out. Medication kept things at bay, and Chris was sent home. But he stopped taking it, and soon the flare-ups came back. In fact, they got him kicked out of the Marines. By now, the Davises had their first son, Isaac. I didn't think that he would ever kill me because I was the mother of his child until uh, that fateful day in February. I will never forget it, February 3rd, 2003. On that day, Morgan told Chris to leave, and he snapped. At that time, my mentality was to choke all life out of her. Morgan escaped and called the MPs. This time, Chris was put in jail. My wife wants nothing to do with me. I can't be within a 1,000 yards of her, her job, my son, his daycare, anything. As reality set in, Chris remembered his grandmother always said to call on Jesus. So he started reading the Bible and going to chapel services. When he got out a year later, he felt like a new man, started taking his family to church. But he never got help with his anger. It didn't take long for the old Chris to resurface. I felt powerless. In my relationship with my husband, I, um, I had no control, no say. For the sake of their son, Morgan stayed, and they had two more children. By now, she had all but given up hope on her marriage and her life. Drinking, for me, was something that uh, helped medicate the pain. She also had an affair with Chris's brother. He treated me more like a wife than my husband did. Chris was consumed with hate and anger. Then one day at church, he says God spoke to his heart. God was using my wife and my marriage to, to break me of me. Because what he was doing was bringing all that old junk to the surface so I could see how really ugly I was. Chris realized he needed help and turned his life completely over to Christ. And right there, I started weeping. Oh, I'm in this. I'm in the church. People around me, they probably had no idea what was going on. I am. I mean, it's just streams flowing down. And I repent right there. Morgan says one night she realized she needed God's help, too. I had just slept with his brother. And I was drunk. I was high. And all of a sudden, I just started throwing up uncontrollably. Lying on the bathroom floor, she called out to God. And I remember saying, um... God, I need you. And I had felt that my life and my soul was really in the balance that night. Right before passing out, Morgan called her husband. Chris came, but instead of taking her home, he took her to his grandmother's. And I woke up to his grandmother 
with my head in her lap, praying over me. Chris's grandmother shared with Morgan God's love for her, and there Morgan gave her life to Jesus Christ. That was my first encounter with this Savior who, despite my sin, took the road um, at Calvary and, and died for me. With counseling and God's help, the Davises were able to forgive each other. Chris learned how to cope with his anger. He also learned how to love his wife, and Morgan learned how to respect her husband. They give God all the glory for what he's done in their marriage and their lives. Despite knowing the sins that I was going to commit against him, he still loved me. Yeah. Uh, it's unfathomable when you think about the love of God. But then when I look back over my testimony and that our testimony has emerged, you can't see nothing but the love of God because of where we are now. That love and that joy and that happiness and that excitement. <laughs> you know, we've been excited like this for the last four and a half, five years. That's what I'm saying. And it gets better. It gets, it gets better. <laughs>